ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله من بعد today is Saturday 11th Muharram corresponding to July 2023 11th Muharram 1445 Muharram is one of the Ashur al Hurum. Ashur al Hurum, there are four. Three of them are in succession Dhul Qaeda, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. And then the fourth one is Rajab by itself. Allah says, So sins are the, the, the sins have more weight in these Ashur al Hurum and also the Hasanat. So these are the blessed months. So a person should try. Even more not to disobey Allah in these Ashur al Haram than in other times. Today, inshallah, we'll explain page 344, chapter 23, Surah Al Mu'minun. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> And when you have embarked on the ship, you and whosoever is with you, then say, All praise be to Allah who has saved us from the people who are our doers. And this is like the ayah <coughs> in Surah Al Zukhruf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْفُلْكِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ مَا تَرْكَبُونَ لِتَسْتَوُوا عَلَى ظُهُورِهِ ثُمَّ تَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ رَبِّكُمْ إِذَا اسْتَوَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَقُولُوا سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ لَنَا هَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لَهُ مُقْرِنِينَ وَإِنَّا إِلَى رَبِّنَا لَمُقْرِبُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And has appointed for you ships and cattle on which you ride, in order that you may mount on their backs, and then may remember the favor of your Lord when you mount thereon. What favor is this? The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made animals that are bigger than human beings, like camels, subservient to human beings, so that human beings can use them to ride on them. Horses, similarly, horses are strong. They, you know, when they fight, they kill each other. And yet, they are subservient to human beings. Also ships, you know, pieces of wood running in huge, uh, many meters deep seas. This is also tashir, sakhar. So Allah sub subjected all these things to human beings so that human beings can benefit from them. And then may you remember the favor of your Lord when you mount thereon and say, glory to him who has subjected this to us and we could never have done it by our efforts and verily to our Lord we, in we indeed are to return. So, when you ride in your car, bicycle, motorcycle, animal, after you sit, then you say, Subhana di sakhara lahada wa makuna lah muqlinin wa inna ila rabbina muqalibun. First, the sunnah is to say, Alhamdulillah, 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 and then to say, Subhana di sakhara lahada wa makuna lah muqlinin. At the end, I will uh, uh, specify a, a hadith that's narrated by Ali radiallahu an, that is related to this. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, when he wrote, he said, uh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. After he, he sat on the animal, he said Alhamdulillah three times, Allahu Akbar three times, and then he said Subhanaka inni zalamtu nafsi fa aftirli fa inna hu la yafur dunu ba illa ant. Then he dahik. This is narrated by Ali. So he, Ali Salatu Salam, he wrote on the animal. He said Alhamdulillah three times, and then Allahu Akbar three times, and then he said Glory be to you, O Lord. I have wronged myself, so forgive me, because no one forgives the sins except you. And then he laughed, alayhi salatu wasalam. 
so Ali radiallahu anhu also when, narr- when he narrated this hadith, he laughed radiallahu anhu. So it's the sunnah to narrate the hadith even with the gestures that the Prophet did. So he alayhi uh, salam said this hadith and, and laughed. Laugh doesn't mean, you know, the way you see people laughing so much, but laugh to smile kind of. So this is another thing that we should do, especially, you know, brothers who are traveling, brothers who drive taxis, for example, you know, especially they're on the road most of the time. You know, it's, it's subjection is, is subjugating uh, these cars and these animals and protecting us from a lot of evil things that can happen. That's why a person should try to learn this. After you sit in your car, you say, Alhamdulillah, 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 then Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Subhanaka, Inni Zalamtu Nafsi, Fawfirli, Fa Innahu, La Yafir Dhunuba Illa Ant. And then he smiles. So, of course, the person, when he sees you from far away, he's not going to understand why he's smiling. But between you and your Lord, you both know why you are doing that. You are following the sunnah of the best of creation. While most people are heedless about these things. They just go, they ride, they blare the music, and then they keep on going. They don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his bounties. And how can we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by having taqwa. The best way to thank Allah is having taqwa. Not just saying by mouth, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfab, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ Tashkurun. If you thank Allah, you obey him. So back to Tafsir ibn Kathir. Certainly Nuh adhered to what he was commanded to. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, your people, no one will believe from among your people after these that believed already. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not argue with me about your people because I shall drown them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Nuh alayhi salam how to build a ship. As we said, he looked more like the submarines today. It floated though, and it had three levels. And he took the believers with him, uh, and his family members who were uh, believers among them. One of his wives and his sons were disbelievers, so they drowned with the disbelievers. And then he also had birds and animals. So they were, so he took uh, a pair from each kind, because every thing else was going to perish on this earth. It was a reset to this earth. That's why human beings today, they are children from Nuh alayhi salam. The people that were with Nuh alayhi salam did not give birth to any uh, progeny. So the progeny that exists today all came from the children of Nuh alayhi salam. And as the scholar says, Allah knows best, for example, the Jews and the, the Arabs, they came from Sam. And that's where they, they use the name Semitic, it's from Sam. So even the, the Arabs, they're from uh, Sam, uh, the, the Sam, the son of Nuh alayhi salam. And then there is Yafith, uh, I believe uh, it's the uh, dark Africa. They said they, they descended from Yafith. And then the Asians and the Turks, they descended from, uh, I don't remember the third name, I can but anyway, uh, the Adam alayhi salam, uh, Nuh alayhi salam is the second father of humanity. Is the second father of humanity. So, uh, <clears throat> Sam, Ham, and Yafith. Sam, Ham, and Yafith. These are three sons of Adam alayhi salam. So Adam, Nuh alayhi salam, uh, sorry, the, the sons of Nuh alayhi salam. So certainly Nuh adhered to what he was commanded, and as Allah says elsewhere, This thing here, if you see the line, and this is called, uh, what is this? Uh, it's iqlab, so majre, it's not majraha. So in the recitation of hafs, it's majreha. Re, waqala rakabu fiha bismillahi majreha wa mursaha. In other recitation, it's mujraha wa mursaha. But in hafs, it's majreha. And he said, embark therein in the name of Allah will be its moving course and its resting 
anchorage. So Nuh mentioned Allah at the beginning of his journey and at the end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Nuh alayhi salam made the dua saying, Wa qur rabbi anzilni muzalam mubarakan wa anta khayrul muzilin. And say, my Lord, cause me to land at a blessed landing place. For you are the best of those who bring to land. In verily in this there are indeed ayat means means in this event, which is the saving of the believers with Nuh alayhi salam and the destruction of disbelievers, there are signs, clear evidence, and proof that the prophets speak the truth in the message they bring from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah does what he wills and he is able to do all things and knows all things and he is to give victory to his prophets and their followers and to destroy the disbelievers and the hypocrites. For sure we are putting men to the test. It means we try our servants by means of sending the messengers. Next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَأَتْرَفْنَاهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مَا هَذَا إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ مَا هَذَا إلا بشر مثلكم يأكل مما تأكلون منه ويشرب مما تشربون ولئن أطعتم بشرا مثلكم إنكم إذا لخاسرون أيعدكم أنكم إذا متم وكنتم ترابا وعظاما أنكم مخرجون هيهات هيهات لما توعدون إن هي إلا حياتنا الدنيا نموت ونحيا وما نحن بمبعوثين إن هو إلا رجل افترى على الله كذبا وما نحن له بمؤمنين قال رب انصرني بما كذبون قال عما قليل لا يصبحون نادمين فأخذتهم الصيحة بالحق فجعلناهم غفاء فبعدا للقوم الظالمين Then after them we created another generation and we sent to them a messenger from among themselves saying worship Allah alone you have no other worthy of worship except him no God, no other God worthy of worship except him will you not then have taqwa and the chiefs of the people of his people who disbelieved and denied the meeting in the hereafter and whom we had given the luxuries and comforts of worldly life usually these are the people that disbelieve in the messengers these chiefs because they didn't want to lose the position of power they said he is no more than a human being like you he eats of that which you eat and drinks of that which you drink if you were to obey a human being like yourselves then verily you indeed would be losers thus the promise does he promise you that when you have died and have become dust and bones, you shall come out alive? Far, very far is that which you are promised. There is nothing but our worldly life in this world. We die and we live. And we are not going to be resurrected. He is only a man who has invented a lie against Allah. And we are not going to believe in him. This is what these disbelieving chiefs said. He said, Nuh alayhi salam said, Oh my Lord, help me because they deny me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in a little while, they are sure to be regretful. The destruction shall come their way. So the sayha overtook them in truth and we made them as rubbish of dead plants, a loud cry, a deafening cry that kills. So away with the people who are wrongdoers. The story of Ad or Thamud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that after the people of Nuh created another nation, it was said that this was Ad. So the, the, the most likely opinion Allah knows best is that it is the people of Ad that came after Nuh alayhi salam because they were the successors of people of Nuh. Or it was said that they were the people of Thamud, the ones that killed the she-camel and destroyed them. 
because Allah says, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّيْحَةُ بِالْحَقِّ So both had uh, this similar punishment among other punishments before them. So the sayha overtook them in truth. The sayha here means a loud shout of cry. So it's a loud cry, it's definite and it kills. Allah sent to them a messenger from among themselves who is Ad alayhi salam and he called them to worship Allah alone with no partner or associate. But they belied him, they opposed him, they refused to follow him because he was human being like them. Because they refused to follow him in messenger just like all of these believers said because it's the same shaitan that tells them uh, these kind of arguments. They all say if Allah truly wanted to send a messenger, he would have sent a messenger from among the angels. So they're not denying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. They don't deny that angels are there, but they deny the messengers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Muhammad sallallahu the disbelievers don't belie you. They know that you are trustworthy, that you don't lie. But they disbelieve in the verses and miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not believe in the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on their first resurrection, something that was too difficult for them to do in this world. So they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also unable to do it. <clears throat> but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from nothing, and from nothing he shall resurrect us. They did not believe in the meaning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on their resurrection. They denied the idea of physical resurrection. They said, Does he promise you that when you have died and have become dust and bones, you shall come out alive, resurrected? Far, very far is that which you have promised. Because in their minds, it's, it's difficult. You, know, you become dusty, you get mixed with dirt for so many uh, uh, centuries and then how are you going to come back what well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do it we are not able to do it because we are weak but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do it so they said that it's very unlikely for us to be resurrected after our death In he is only a man who has invented a lie against Allah meaning in the message he has brought to you and his warnings and promise of resurrection this is only a lie according to what these disbelievers said and then they said and we are not going to believe him so he said, no, alayhi salam, oh my Lord, uh, oh my Lord, help me because they deny me. I know actually this is not no alayhi salam, this is, uh, this is uh, Ad alayhi salam. وَمَا نَحْنُ لَهُ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ قَالَ رَبِّ أَنصُرْنِي بِمَا كَذَّبُونَ This is uh, Ad okay. Yes, we finished uh, the story of Nuh So this story of Ad, this is Ad alayhi salam. He said, uh, he said, the means Ad alayhi salam said, Oh my Lord, help me because they deny me. Meaning the messenger prayed against his people and asked his Lord to help him against them. His Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his prayer and said, Allah said in a little while, they are sure to be regretful, meaning for their opposition towards you and their stubborn rejection of the message you brought to them. <coughs> so the result is that the sayha overtook them in truth. Meaning they deserve that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of their disbelief or wrong the one. So it was a sayha that overtook them with truth, not through injustice. <clears throat> the third mean is that the sayha was combined with the furious cold wind. So it's many punishments that came to them because as Allah subhanahu wa says, <clears throat> Allah says that uh, Allah gave drought to the people of Ad. So they were looking forward to rain coming to them and filling their valleys with water. 
So when they saw a huge black cloud coming from far away, they said, oh, finally, this is the, the, the water we're waiting for uh, so eagerly. But Allah SWT tells them, no, it is a, uh, a severe wind that shall destroy everything by the command of its Lord. <clears throat> it is what you have been asking for to happen, the punishment you told your prophet. If you are truly a prophet, then bring a punishment on us. So here is the punishment coming. Uh, strong wind that carries within it a severe punishment. It destroys everything by the command of its Lord. So the people of Ad became such that nothing could be seen except their dwellings because they boasted about their size. They were in the size of Adam, alayhi salam. They were huge, uh, 60 cubits, and they thought that you know they were very strong, but this wind carried them and then carried them up high and then smashed them on the ground. So their heads were severed from their bodies. So they, they, they lay dead looking like tree trunks when the wind, uh, when a, a tornado, for example, comes and uh, picks up the trees and throws them. And then you see pieces of tree, trees, tree trunks littering the, the land right and left. That's how they became. So that was their one of their punishments. So it was the wind, and then there was, and then there was the saiha. So there was a loud cry and the severe wind that picked them up and smashed them on the ground, and we made them as rubbish of dead plants. Means they are dead and destroyed, like the scum and rubbish left by a flood. That means something insignificant and useless that is of no benefit to anyone. And this reminds me of the hadith that kind of speaks of the times that Muslims live in today, where he said, there's going to come a time on the Muslims where the nations, the disbelieving nations of the world will gather around you, around the table, like the United Nations table, it's round, and they will uh, divide you, divide you up and eat you up, plunder your resources the same way uh, people gather around a plate of food. So the companions uh, were surprised because the companions were willing to die for this religion. And they knew that the disbelievers couldn't touch the Muslims because the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Muslims and the Muslims were too strong through their faith and Allah's support for the disbelievers to do that. So their explanation said that maybe the Muslims are going to be very, very, their number is going to be very little and they're going to be outnumbered by disbelievers. So they said, oh, Prophet, are we going to be few at that time? He alayhi salatu wasalam, no. In numbers, you will be many. Muslims now, 1.7 billion Muslims. But he said, you will be gufa. You will be like this, scum and rubbish left by a flood. Something insignificant and useless that is of no benefit to anyone. This is who the Muslims are today. People don't care about us. This is not care about us. They kill us by the millions. Why? Because we chose a way of life that is opposite from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. And we chose to follow disbelievers. We chose to be behind them, to imitate them in their disbelief when we are better than them. And this brainwash has been done with time through journals, through newspaper, through magazines, through TV channels, through satellite channels, through YouTube, through TikTok, through mass media, through many, many means. And these means were never imposed on us Muslims. We chose to go this way. So we became like a rubbish. And he, alayhi salatu salam, did tell us, did tell us in another hadith, the way out of this quagmire. Because he, alayhi salatu salam, always mentioned the symptoms of the disease, the outcome of the sickness, and how to get out of the sickness. How to, how, he always told us the cure. In the other hadith, where Yahya Salaam said, if the Muslims fulfill four conditions, then Allah will put humiliation on them. It's Allah who's putting humiliation on us. And for us to exit this humiliation, we have to go back to the true religion that he, alayhi salatu salam, and the companions were on. Not the Western sanctioned Islam. Not the uh, shaven men's 
uh, claiming to be scholars, not the Sufi misguided ways uh, Islam, not the Shia Islam, not the Ikhwan Muslimin Islam, not the Ashaira Islam, not the Mu'tazila Islam, not the Jahmiya Islam, not the different deviant groups Islam. It is the Islam that the Salaf was on. The Islam that is sanctioned for the Muslims in the Quran. وَمَن يُشَاقِ الرَّسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَهُ الْتَبِعِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَوْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ هُمْ الصَّحَابَةِ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Anyone that goes against the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ Like Prophet ﷺ said, you know, give bay'ah to your uh, leader uh, Do not differ uh, Do not fight each other, do not kill each other, the Ikhwan Muslimin, they come, they said, no, this leader is doing injustice, we're going to do revolt against him. And then what happens, they just, the disbelievers come, they give the leader the weapons, the money, they tell him, we'll help you quell this, uh, this uh, insurrection, but in return, you have to implement this evil in your land. So here, as said, whomever opposes the Prophet and follows a way other than the way of the believers, who are the companions, that means Islam according to the understanding of the companions. Allah will set him in that wrong path that that person chose and he will send him to hellfire and what an evil abode it is. So the four conditions were filled. I will say what these conditions are. The humiliation was put on the Muslims. The solution is to go back to the true religion according to the understanding of the companions. The four conditions is number one, if you indulge in dealing with interest, you follow the tales of the cows, meaning all your time in life is gaining worldly benefits, dunya. So dunya. The only thing that makes a Muslim happy today is worldly benefit. And you leave jihad. So these are four conditions. If they are fulfilled, Allah will put humiliation on you. He will not take it away from you until you go back to your religion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back the Muslims to the true path, especially the youth among them. So away with the people who are wrong the words. As Allah's statement said, who wrong them not, but they were the wrongdoers. Meaning, who are wrong the words because of their disbelief, their stubborn opposition to the messenger of Allah. So let those who hear this beware of disbelieving in their messengers. They did them just to themselves, to their families, and to the ones that they misguided. So this is it for today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all trials and tribulations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hasana in this dunya, hasana in the hereafter, and save God us from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the goodness, uh, what we know from it and what we don't know from it, what is soon and what is coming. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil, uh, from evil, uh, what we know from it, what we don't know from it, what is uh, near and what is far away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cause us, to give us steadfastness in this religion until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the best day of our existence the day we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us in the highest parallels with the Firdaus.